ward rounds are the best uh, teaching material which one can have in uh, uh, pg tenure i very well remember uh, our dr pk said he used to say whenever he used to take grand rounds all the faculty all the residents were there to to listen to him because what experience you can gain in the ward rounds is the best one ward rounds the it put patients with Dressing, dressing materials, patient with skin and skin infection, patient with external fixator, and general ward disposable. Today, I am going to dis uh, 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 discuss the casting materials in uh, orthopedics and dressing materials in orthopedics. Plaster of Paris bandage. The Matheson was the first Dutch military surgeon in nineteen in eighteen fifty eight to use this uh, uh, POP bandage. it is the gypsum which has been uh, converted into the pop material and it is impregnated with the bandage and uh, the full strength uh, is achieved in 24 to 48 hours and the setting time is used for the time can be varied with the help of temperature of the water impurities in the water in the plaster humidity room temperature and the type of water which we are using it is available in the 4 inches and the 6 inches sizes the the very important thing which we should know that after application of the cast or the plaster slab what complication one can have we should be aware of these complications otherwise there will be a lot of problems to the patient as well as to the the complications are the neurovascular compromise the compartment syndrome the pressure sore dermatitis reactionary edema loss of reduction joint stiffness and the wasting of the limb because of the uh, uh, immobility there can be a fracture disease the fracture disease is defined as a prolonged immobilization of the fracture which leads to pain swelling stiffness and osteopenia in the limb so what is the difference between slab and the cast slab is always given as a temporary measure immediately after injury patient is being given slab immediately after post operative period the patient is given in the the slab in the ot so the the temporary days for few days for few hours the patient till the definitive treatment is not there we can use a slab it always cover the 50 to 70% of the limb circumference there are always 6 to 8 layers of the uh, thick in the upper limb and 10 to 12 layers in the lower limb the volar surface is used for the upper limb while the dorsal surface is used for the lower limb the cast on the other hand is in, it contain covers the entire circumference of the limb there is overlapping of the bandage in one third or the half of the previous term the thickness of the cast varies as per the patient uh, fracture matters then the when you apply the cast you have to remember various things one thing which, which is very important is that the edges should be turned outside so that there is no digging of the cast into the soft tissue another the very important thing is that limb is not uniform throughout the length then for example in the lower limb there are various bony points there are various uh, areas which which can cause pressure pressure sore so from that this point of view you should consider applying good amount of cotton over the bony points as well as molding the uh, cast at the bony points if you do not mold the uh, cast at the bony point then it will be just like a cylinder and it will lead to the loss of reduction it will lead to uh, dig the plaster in the soft tissue another uh, very latest one is fiberglass plaster which is made of fiberglass impregnated with polyurethane polymer the setting time is 1 to 2 minutes full strength is 2 to 4 hours it is available in 3 to 5 inches the advantage of this is it's lightweight it is waterproof there is less less setting time it is very hard and strong also and the disadvantage is it is very costly for fracture reduction you need traction as well as counter traction and the reduction in violation of the distal fragment the acceptable reduction is one where the minimum 50% contact is there ideally it should be 100% contact but minimum 50% if contact is there in ap and the lateral view then we can accept this reduction but the rotation is not at all acceptable it should not be accepted at all because the rotation will not uh, correct automatically the limb should be maintained in the functional position or the position of immobilization what is functional position functional position is the one 
in which even after the uh, cast is removed then the, it will not go into uh, uh, stiffness and what is the uh, position of immobilization it is the position in which all the ligaments and the tendons are stretched fully so that there is no contracture development uh, during the uh, cast application fracture reduction with the cast application follows charles three point principle in this two points are in the proximal as well as distal to the fracture while the third point is at the fracture site and the third point is the direction of the force is opposite to the other two points the what is the, it's very important to know the cast index because it gives you an idea whether this cast has been applied in a proper way or not whether the cast has been molded properly or not so the cast index is very important it is the ratio of sagittal the at the fifth side the cast index of 0.7 is taken as the benchmark if it is more then it is a useless cast because it is going to uh, create a lot of problems it will uh, uh, dislodge the fragments and there will be loss of reduction while the cast plaster cast of 0.8 or more it is not good at all the cast index is a simple radiological predictor of cast plaster cast failure impedative distal forearm fractures casting in james position what is james position it is very important for the uh, hand and the fingers to apply in the james position it is all applied in the, indicated in the fractures of the metacarpal proximal phalanx fractures metacarpal joint injuries tendon rupture tendon repair or for the prevention of the clawing in this position the wrist is in 30 to 40 degrees of uh, dorsiflexion mcp joint is in 70 degrees of flexion pip joint is in 20 degree of flexion and dip joint is 10 degree of flexion the extent of the cast is proximally it covers lower two third of the radius and distally it is proximal to the dip joint what is thumb spica it is indicated in fracture of the thumb involving the first mcp joint and first cmc joint and ip joint of the thumb this position uh, degrees of extension that is dorsiflexion and thumb is in fracture palmar depression the extent of the cast is covers it uh, the upper lower two third of the radius and distally it is up to the tip of the thumb while is skip to plus skip it cast it is basically applied for conservative management of the fracture skiphoid in this it is a glass holding position the wrist is radially deviated More moderately dorsal, and the thumb is in mild abduction. The extent is again uh, the lower two third of the radius, and distally the PIP uh, IP joint of the thumb is free. In Collis cast, which is very very common, and everybody encounters uh, many many thousand during his career. So indication are Collis fracture for unstable distal radius fracture. Collis cast is applied. The position of the wrist should be twenty five degrees of ulnar deviation. slight palmar flexion and the forearm is fully pronated the extent of the cast is proximally it covers lower to third of the forearm distally it covers proximal to the palmar crease in volar aspect and short of knuckles in this dorsal aspect above elbow cast above elbow cast is very important to know it is always given in fracture of the both forearm bones fracture of the olecranon fracture of the medial epicondyle fracture of the lateral epicondyle and the position is elbow is in 90 degree of flexion forearm is fully supinated in the distal fracture that's in the cast is proximally up to mid arm and distally just proximal to the mcb joints it is very important to uh, give this uh, position in 90 degree of flexion because it has been proved many times if the angle is obtuse means it, if it is less than 90 degree then there are chances of uh, swelling and there are chances of uh, problem in the uh, cast application what is useless it is indicated with the fracture shaft of the humerus the position is arm by side of the trunk elbow is in 40 degree of flex position it is pronated stretching from end of the arm it runs around the elbow and it ends over the shoulder of the shoulder and the neck a lot of uh, uh, orthopedic procedures are available so it is not being used below knee cast it is indicated for the injuries around the ankle fractures of the foot like calcaneum talus tarsal and metatarsal the position is ankle is slightly plantar flexed 
the extent of the cast is approximately just above the bulk of the calf and distally pulp of the toes must be covered here one should remember that the cast should not dig in the popliteal fossa it should not grow beyond the bulk of the calf bulk of the uh, calf muscles cylindrical cast it is indicated in acute knee injuries patella fractures the knee is uh, in the complete extended position the extent it is high grown groin to about the ankle here one one point of consideration that when you are applying the cylindrical cast you should take care of the bony points especially around the patella especially around the tendo achilles because in the uh, around the tendo achilles if you are not proper uh, applying the wool uh, cotton and other things then it will dig into the tendo achilles and as soon as the patient starts walking there will be a lot of problem to the the gt cast or the abony cast it is indicated for fracture on the knee fractures of the tibia fibula on the fractures the position is the knee is in 15 degree of flexion why 15 degree of flexion it is very important this is the functional position of the knee 15 if you lie the cast in a complete extension then there will be uh, the knee is locked and then once the knee is locked then there will be a problem and the rotational movements of the upper fragment will lead to dislodge of the dislodgement of the uh, fracture fragment so the knee is always applied in the 15 degree of flexion the ankle is in 10 degree of plantar flexion in upper third tibial fractures and 20 degree plantar flexion in lower two third fractures the extent is mid thigh to mtb joints then ctv cast it's very very important ctv cast nowadays the punctive methods is being used to treat the ctv and depending upon the which stage you are using the punctive methods the cast always the knee is in 90 degree of flexion because if you are not applying the knee uh, cast in the 90 degree of flexion the cast will be worn out it uh, the, because of the kicking of the uh, child the cast will be removed automatically there will be slippage of the cast the ankle and foot are as per sequence of the deformity correction the extent of the cast is approximately just short of the groin and distally the pulp of the toes should be covered but the dorsum of the toes should be visible it is very important to the uh, uh, circulation of toes to, to know the uh, swelling of the toes if there is any problem inside the cast you are able to know only with the help of the color of the uh, toes and the swelling of, of the toes functional cast dressing it was first of all invented by the sarmento in 1963 the hypo he hypothesized that function should be continued at the time of union of the fracture as the enhances union healing with the fracture and prevents joint, joint stiffness it is based on pascal's law what is pascal's law when the limb is lo loaded it generates intra compartmental pressure around the fracture site that in turn exerts pressure on the facial wall but as there is rigid cast around the limb so similar amount of pressure is starts protection which maintains the reduction at the fracture site what are the indication this indicated in such the proximal middle and distal part of the t fracture fracture of the there should be prerequisites what are the prerequisites it should be applied only once it should be minimum 22 to 3 weeks after that the ptb for the cast basing should be done. there should not be any angular or rotational deformity the fracture site should be painless with no deformity and there should not be any telescoping at the fracture site not more than 0.25 inches that means less than 1 cm shortening is accepted what are the contraindications the neuromuscular disorders isolated tibial fracture with intact fibula bone fracture of the forearm they are they are the uh, contraindication montagia fracture dislocation galeazzi fracture dislocation these are the contraindication the Which it was used previously, but not nowadays. It helps to stabilize the fracture with the cast and skin maintain. If the fracture is not very much displaced, then it is being applied. The two pins are one above and one below. As far as possible, is applied and reduction is achieved. After which the cast is applied or the fracture in reduced position with minimal joint involvement. The advantage is it prevents joint stiffness. Early mobilization, checking of the rotation is important. And the disadvantage is. reduction may be lost and the pin tract infection may be there hip spica what is spica spica is basically a figure of a 
when our band is already supplied in the gear of eight position it is called spica hip spica is around the hip it encompasses the trunk with low limbs it indicate indications are fracture femur in the children after pediatric hip surgeries we do apply in ddh reduction we do apply hip spica the position of the limb hip is in 40 degree of flexion slight abduction knee is 45 degrees of uh, uh, flexion and ankle is in neutral rotation the extent is proximally up to the nipple and distally on the basis of distal extension cast can be of three types single hip spica which involves only one leg and up, extend up to the foot one and half hip spica it involves one leg up to the foot and other leg up to the knee double hip hip spica it involves both legs and up to the foot and hip spica and ddh is in a special situation in which it is uh, given in the human position 95 degree of flexion at the hip joint 40 to 45 degree of abduction at the hip this position increases the stability of the hip and decreases the chances of avian of the femoral head <coughs> complications of the hip spica it's very important to know the complications of hip spica urinary retention perineal irritation due to wetting of the calf by urinary stool uh, urine or the stools the plaster cast syndrome one should remember this plaster cast syndrome it is a dreaded complication one should know about it one should foresee is there any chances of uh, plaster cast syndrome it leads to severe vomiting abdominal pain and distension it develops due to obstruction of the third part of the duodenum between aorta and superior mesenteric artery the treatment is immediate removal of the cast nbm iv fluids antacid antiemetics right tube right tube insertion and in severe case it may you may have to go for urgent laparotomy but you should be very well aware of the plaster cast syndrome you should always uh, look for all the uh, symptoms and uh, for the plaster cast syndrome making window in the cast it is being required whenever you want to uh, inspect the wound frequently or for the stitch removal so the site of window can be identified by overpeding or you can mark it while applying a cast you can just mark it with the help of a pen or a marker and then you can remove the once the cast is set in you can remove the window and then you can inspect the wound or you can remove the sutures wedging of the cast usually whenever there is 10 to 15 degrees of angulation then only wedging of the cast is really successful it is done once the fracture becomes sticky after 2 or 3 days what the steps i wish to identify the wedging site do circumferential slitting of the cast opposite the site of angulation leave at least one fourth of the circumference of the cast so that the entire you are slitting then there will be loss of reduction hold the wedging of the cast with a block and repair the cast with pop bandage immediately and check partial reduction under iit also level of the cast whenever the whole cast is to be removed it is done when frequent observation of the fracture site needs to be done in compound fractures or when there is a risk of compartment syndrome and remember the fiberglass cast is always cut in by method what are the checklist for the casting what is the extent of the cast you have to apply these things you should remember what position you have to give to while applying the cast what alignment of the limb you should take the it, the cast should be smooth there should not be any irregularity it should be well molded cast around the uh, bony points bony prominence there should be enough cotton wool around the bony prominences so there should not be any any uh, pressure sore or the plaster sore and the signs of tight cast you should always remember it is very very important to know the signs of tight cast because uh, i always ask my students to admit the uh, cases of hip spica because until and unless the patient is passing urine and the stool then we can we are sure that the things are okay and then we can discharge the patient but we on opd basis we do not go for any hip spica cast points to be told uh, the second step is the dressing materials there are different types of materials their content what are the indications of the, these different dressing materials what are the possible complications and difference from the peers what is the type of dressing we we have seen many many dressings every day nowadays because of the operative procedures a lot of operative procedures lot of infection lot of complications 
we have to go for dressings and so we sh- we must know what are the dressing materials available and what where we should use which type of dressing so the object of the dressing is to control the moisture content of the wound to protect the wound from the infection to enhance the slough slough removal to pH and the temperature what layers of the dressing the with which is in the immediate contact of the wound then adopted layer which has got pads for their absorbent property and it is the thickest layer in dressing and another third layer is the compressive layer it is a cotton roller bandage or elastic bandage which whatever you want as for the situation arises it is cotton fabric digital like for it is quick absorbent number of holes uh, per square centimeter it is called width and breadth it is 4 by 4 that is 16 holes per square centimeter this bandage is useful for us various available sizes are 5.5 7.5 and 10 uh, by 10 gamji roll it is very important it is it was invented by dr joseph samson gamji he has thick layer of cotton sheet between two cotton gauze pieces it is highly absorbent property it promotes the quick healing of the wound this uh, another is elastic bandages or the crab bandages it is made up of cotton polyester elastic yarn it develops a stable pressure around area of application leading to reduction of blood flow and thus reduces the swelling of the wound it develops hemostatic effect due to compression adhesive surgical tape these are the two types of uh, surgical tape one is the cotton tape that is leucoplast or uh, dynaplast or elastoplast and the paper type which is micropore the zinc oxide tape is now no more in the use because it has got a uh, uh, some patients are allergic to zinc oxide so it is now obsolete porous tapes allows air to reach to the skin elastic or stretchable tapes are also available like dynaplast and elastoplast now the dressing materials tinctured benzoin it is a benzoin resin in the alcohol it have adhesive and antiseptic properties the various uses are pin track dressings minor cuts oral mucosa application before skin traction tonic application i very well remember i always ask the uh, my residents to put the tincture tincture benzoin swab around the pin track so that there are no chances of infection maxel it is a very common material which is being used by the surgeon or the sumag sumag is uh, different from maxel sumag is magnesium sulfate and urea while the max self is magnesium sulfate and glycerin they have hygroscopic properties which reduces edema paraffin goes with dressing it is very much used in orthopedics it is available with or without antibiotic most of the time we are using with the antibiotic wherever we we uh, we suspect that there are chances of infection we use it with the antibiotic otherwise we use it without antibiotic it keeps the wounds moist and prevents adhesion of the dressing with the wounds it has got antiseptic property it promotes granulation tissue formation now the alginates it is composed of sodium and calcium salts of alginic acid and it is naturally found in the brown algae it forms a biofilm which is which has as absorbent property and it keeps the wound moist it is used in the dressing of chronic ulcers burns wounds with large exudates and skin grafting dressings hydrogen peroxide it is very frequently used in orthopedics the composition it 20 volumes of the hydrogen peroxide means one volume of 20 volume of the hydrogen peroxide it produces 20 volumes of nascent oxygen it has got very important role it has got cleansing effect on the wounds it is used in chemical cauterization for anaerobic microbe destruction and removing the blood stains from the clothes surgical spirit the composition is 70% alcohol it is isopropyl alcohol or ethanol it has antiseptic effect its uses are cleansing cleaning of the infection site and stretches stitch wounds for the dry, dry dressing and for the surgical site preparation savalon frequently used in our uh, ot it is a tartaragine yellow it is composed of uh, strong cetrimide which is 16% weight by volume chlorhexidine gluconate 7.5% weight by volume and isopropyl alcohol 6.8% 8% weight volume by volume it is used in 1 1 is to 30 dilution for cleansing and disinfection of the dirty wounds and in 1 in 100 dilution for operative site scrubbing 
storage of thermometer etc detol it is light yellow as compared to the cevlon the composition is 4.8% chlorxylenol and terpenolone it produces milky emulsion of the oil droplets when diluted with water its uses are to clean the minor cuts wounds cleaning the household surfaces etc povidone iodine it is the uh, most frequently used by all the orthopedic surgeons it is available as solution in 5% and the 10% scrub solution and ointment in the 10 uh, 10% and it constitutes iodine with polyvinyl perylalanine it has antiseptic and bactericidal effect against bacteria fungi protozoa virus and yeast without toxicity of iodine so this is the most important thing that it is effective against all type of organism whether the bacteria fungi protozoa virus and yeast and but it has a staining uh, property and it is irritant property so it should not be used in articular surface area in the cornea in other areas where the uh, the articular surface is uh, uh, open it should not be used chlorhexidine solution it contains chlorhexidine gluconate it has a antiseptic effect in lower concentration and bactericidal effect in higher concentration it is available in 2% and the 4% forms it is used in surgical scrub hand washing by healthcare personnel post operative wound cleaning usol once it was very famous once it was uh, part of the war uh, trolley but nowadays it is based by uh, powder iodine so many other materials usol stands for edinburgh university solution of lime it com- is composed of boric acid 1.25 grams bleaching powder 1.5 grams sterile water 100 ml and it has acidic ph it releases nascent chloride which acts as a disloping agent it's it's used as disloping agent for infected wounds bed sores ulcers and burns it is useful for pseudomonas infected wounds due to its acidic ph this is a very important thing because it is used for the pseudomonas because of its acidic ph usol 2 contains sodium acetate and glacial acetic acid some specific dressing material oxoferrin sodium solution it is oxum available in the name of oxum it contains tetrachlor dicoxide it releases nascent oxygen which is mitogenic chemotactic accelerator of the phyto uh, phagocytosis and it is used as a cleansing agent silver ions curion available as a curion contains silver ions 0.1% silver nitrate it kills bacteria destroys biofilm it stimulates granulation tissue growth and it is used for infected and contaminated wounds placenta extract which is available as placentrex it is made from human placenta it has anti aging uh, anti aging factor it has anti inflammatory effect it improves the blood circulation increases new cell formation new new uh, osteogenesis new uh, 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 blood circulation it is used for non healing and the chronic wounds so like the bed sores and uh, uh, other things collagen granules it is uh, cola wound available as cola wound it contains collagen protein type 1 2 3 it inhibits matrix metal metalloproteinases that promotes extracellular matrix and granulation tissue formation it also has chemotactic effect and absorbent capacity it is used for non healing and chronic wounds it is really very effective in, in small wounds to gain the uh, healing of the wounds what uh, dressing trolley should contain in uh, what are the materials which should be there available in the dressing trolley the two dressing trolley should be there no. in the wall one dressing trolley for the clear wounds and another for the infected wounds it should have a surgical dress drum which is trial gauze pieces dressing pads for no. the or roller bandages sidex tray should be there it should be of 2% glutaraldehyde solution with scissors artery forceps needle holder thumb forceps and this sidex tray should be changed every 14 days i always ask my uh, nursing in charge that uh, on every alternate sunday this side extract should be completely changed so that there are no chances of infection then there should be kidney tray then there should be transparent wide mouth red glass bottle of savlon with a sterile cotton at the base of the bottle with chitral forceps few people are not uh, wary of the chitral forceps because it causes cross infection other dressing material like cotton roll bandages surgical blades gloves spirit other antiseptic solution 
should be available and beside that you should have a clear understanding of how to dispose of your dressing material how to dispose of your pus and uh, uh, serum and other uh, liquid material how to dispose of your this uh, mold uh, needles and the uh, surgical knives and etc you should be wary of uh, all these things because it's very important to discriminate all these things and uh, um, throw off in the separate uh, container so the take home message is ward round section is scoring and simple section of the practical examination the brief and concise knowledge about all common stuff related to the admitted patient is sufficient enough to get through this part of examination i once again uh, feel that the ward round is the one of the best method teach and to learn all these things about our orthopedic patients about our day to day activities of their about our uh, post operative dressings about uh, their care in the uh, cast about various instructions you should give to the patient say for example you should give always give the instructions uh, when applying the cast that it should be elevated toes should be moved always the toe movement will give you lesser swelling and it will also mobility of the muscle so there are chances less chances of atrophy must very much for this uh, presentation thank you manish